Well, hi, everybody. That is great to have you joining us. And uh, thanks for being in a small group. Love that. We are looking at God, the God who fights for us. Now, I don't know if you're a fighter <laughs> or not, but uh, we have a God who is our protector. So here, here's, here's the deal. We're starting a new series that is called <clears throat> The Solid Rock, and it has to do with the God of the Psalms. And God is that rock solid kind of God. Well, I'm looking at Psalm 30 this weekend, so you guys are gonna be talking about it. And basically, just to set it up, it's a psalm that's sung. It was really a song that David wrote for the dedication of his house, not, his, not the temple. Solomon would build the temple later, even though David planned it. But David's house was completed. So upon completion, he wrote this psalm, Psalm 30, giving praise to God. It's interesting that he doesn't give praise to himself. He doesn't give praise to someone else, but he gives all the praise to God. I really like that. So there's kind of a, a few things. It's about a God who intervenes. In verse one, it says, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. This is the whole idea of God is an active God in your life. So maybe, maybe go around the circle and actually talk about a time when you feel God stepped in and got you out of a mess or stepped in and provided something for you. I think it would be encouraging for people to hear some stories in your group. The second one is that God restores. This verse two says, Oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you restored my health. Who knows how many times David got sick? Most commentary commentaries don't even, scholars are like, well, of course. He probably almost died many times. You think he's living in caves and bacteria and the challenges of the world he was living in in the culture that he was living in. God, no doubt, spared his life many times physically, not just running from Saul, but illness, sicknesses, who knows, all the things that he faced. So maybe share a story when you feel like God touched your heart, did something special for you. The God who encourages this verse in verse three. Why don't you read that verse out loud to each other and talk about God bringing you out of a pit that maybe you were in. I'll just say this one thing about this one. This is a metaphor. When he says, you um, you lifted me out of the pit. It's like taking a ladle and dipping it in a stream and pulling the water out. And it, it basically is saying, I'm lifting you out of where this water is going because I'm using you for something special. And David's saying, thank you for lifting me out of the pit of death and letting my life be spent to bring you glory and honor. There's three takeaways real fast that I want you guys to talk about. And I think they're really important. I've called it an action plan in your outline. Learn to become more dependent. In a culture that's teaching us to be independent, I think we need to lean in on God a little more. Number two, acknowledge God's presence. Maybe in the middle of the day, maybe right now you could just say, God is here. God is here. Maybe even in a tough moment in your day, when you don't feel God, to just go, God is here. Maybe you're just eating a burger and you go, God is here. <laughs> just acknowledge that he's with you always. And then the last one, which I think could be the most important thing I've said about this message is live with gratitude. David didn't get confused about who was to be glorified for this accomplishment. And it was God. Give him glory. Live with gratitude. Talk a little bit about that. Have fun. I hope you're, I hope you're eating something good too. Take care. Bye-bye.